What's up guys? Today we are back with my very first tier list ever. I've seen a lot of tier lists going around, so I wanted to make one of my own. Now, we're gonna get right into it, and the first brawler that comes to mind is Barry. I think it's the best brawler in the game right now. It's just like a thrower, it has so much healing, it charges the passive super way too fast. It has like two escapes, or like a knockback and an escape. And Supercell has a habit of just making new brawlers the best brawlers in the game, and that's the case with Barry in my opinion. After Barry, I don't want to, like my top three, top five are probably like, well, we'll see in a sec, but I'm going to put Lily up there second. I think Lily is just really broken too. I thought it was kind of fun before the buff. The buff was really big. They did emergency nerf it kind of after a few days and it's like a little more balanced yet now, but it's still really broken. The gadget is just way too good on it and it's definitely a really strong pick right now. After Lily, I'm going to put Frank up there. So Frank was recently reworked if you guys haven't played the game. Um, he shoots extremely fast when he's low HP now, so he can kind of like one-shot anyone that gets close to him. And I think combined with his anti-stun gadget, he's super, super strong right now. Now, people have figured out how to counter him a bit better, and it's still Frank, so, you know, he's still like really weak to Colette and like other like tank counters. But the anti-stun does such a good job canceling out like half the counters that I think he can win most of the matchups. Um, but the main issue with Frank is I think he just feeds too many hypercharges. He did get his own hypercharge. It's it's a good hypercharge, but I think it just has like a lot. It's like pretty one dimensional compared to some of the other hypercharges that can kind of like carry the game. So regardless of all that, I think he's still like super, super strong. So I'm going to put him top three. After Frank, we're going to put Meg up there. Meg also got another rework and... <laughs> It's probably my least favorite brawler in the game. I find it so boring to play, but it's so good. It's such a good tank counter now. It has like decent range. They cut down the range a lot to like double the damage or something. So if you ever get on a high safe or like up close to someone, you just melt them now. And uh, it's just like such a well-rounded brawler. I feel like it has so much HP. The super is all right on it, but you get it really fast. And two forms. The knockback star power is really broken right now too. So Meg is definitely in the top five for me. Alright guys, this brawler is not even out in the game yet, but I feel like it's pretty safe to put in the S tier Clancy. I've seen a few uh, sneak peeks of it. I've never played it in the dev build or anything like that, so I don't know how it like is exactly, but I feel like it's pretty safe to put a new brawler in the S tier, so we're just going to put it there to get it out of the way. After Clancy, we are going to put Kit. Now, Kit is one that I was kind of debating S or like high A tier. I think it is really broken, but... It's win rates from what I've seen from like a lot of the pro teams aren't always the best. I think it's just like a very like risky brawler, like hit or miss. Definitely it's hard to play against, I'll give you that. But it's also like hard to pull off sometimes. Like most teams know how to draft decently against Kit. Uh, and it does kind of... The only part that I don't like about Kit is the passive part where you can just like sit back, get your super, and then jump on the tank and kill them. I really don't like that. I like Kit a lot as an assassin kind of brawler. I've been playing it a lot. It's pretty fun. You play like aggro kit. Um, I don't like the slave kitty part, but yeah, it's definitely a really strong brawler and I don't like playing against it. I like playing it. I don't like playing against it. All right. So that's actually going to do it for the S tier. There's a few other brawlers that are like borderline like S and A tier, but when I thought about it more, I think these ones just kind of stand out compared to the rest. Um, the next closest one that comes to mind is probably like Gene. So we're going to put Gene as the first in A tier. I can find him at the bottom here. And Gene, I think it's just really easy to make comps with, uh, especially in draft. It just has some modes where it's like first pick or like really early pick or like pick or ban. And I feel like it's just so versatile. The healing, the pull, like the range, the poke. It's just a really good brawler. The hypercharge on Gene sucks. <laughs> the gadget on Gene's really good. Uh, Vengeful Spirits, but the Hypercharge on Gene sucks. I think you should mainly use it for damage. I feel like the pulls like always miss and Gene pulls are pretty like, they're not like easy to hit, some of them are, but I feel like you have a higher chance of missing when you use the Hypercharge, from what I've seen at least. So Gene's gonna be the first brawler in A tier though. After Gene, we're gonna do Colette. Now, if you look at some of the brawlers in the top, we got Meg, we got Frank, we got Lily. They all have pretty decent HP and I think Colette has gotten a lot better just mainly because of Frank. <laughs> It's pretty good into Meg too. Lily, it's not bad into, but I think it's just really strong right now. And it's maybe not like the top two in A tier, but it's definitely in the top end of A tier. And uh, yeah, it's just really good into the meta right now, in my opinion. All right, we're gonna put Gale as actually the best brawler <laughs> in A tier. I think it could be S tier. It could be the worst in S tier, the best in A tier. Gale is really good. I forgot about it on the list. There's too many icons they're blending in with each other. 
But Gale, it's like really good right now. Part of it is due to a glitch with the super that's doing like way more damage than it should be. So after that gets fixed, I think it'll be A tier. It could be like low S tier, like I said right now. But ever since it got the hypercharge, I think it's just really, really strong. And the super is just such a big threat. And now like you get like the hypercharge off it as well. So at some point you'll get it. And people have been switching over to Stun Gale from what I've been seeing. Um, it's definitely a matchup dependent, but I think Stun Gale is really strong right now. Slow Gale, it, like Gale all around, it's good. You can't really go wrong picking Gale. You can pick him, pick him like almost anywhere as long as it's like the right mode for him. But uh, I think Gale is probably the best A tier brother we have. I'm gonna put Angelo up next. So Angelo actually got like a really big nerf, but he was probably the best brawler in the game for like a few months. So he's still really good and they gave him a hypercharge and the hypercharge is really broken in my opinion. They did have to hot fix it or uh, yeah, like fix it really fast because you, it took way too long to charge when it first came out. So it's pretty good. You'll get it like once per game now, twice if you like they're just feeding you and it's a really good hypercharge in my opinion. You can just kind of wait it out, but Angelo is just so safe to play. I really don't like the Brawler because you just play max range and you have max movement speed and you have a pierce gadget and like a jump gadget that jumps like three tiles. It's just like a really not a fun play style. I don't know. I don't like the Brawler. I don't mind playing against it. It's just, I don't know. It's not fun for me, um, but it is really strong. So it's definitely like high A tier. Alright guys, we're gonna get some throwers out of the way. So Larry and Lori, definitely A tier. It's been way too strong since release, and I think it got nerfed like probably like eight or nine times. I don't know the exact amount, but it was like something like that. And people stopped playing it a bit, but it was always still really good. It's just way too safe, does way too much damage, and the super is really broken along with the gadget. Uh, you always want to be using the gadget that swaps to... <laughs> Not swaps. You don't want to use the one that swaps guns with your super, but the one that like... You change places with it so larry it's definitely a really safe pick and it's probably the best thrower in my opinion besides barry of course barry's just kind of you know way too broken right now but yeah if larry gets a hypercharge it's gonna be so broken after larry we're just gonna do barley i think barley's hypercharge is really really good um obviously you can counter barley but the hypercharge even if they go something to counter you, they're probably gonna go like aggro and uh, you'll get your hypercharge at some point. And the hypercharge is like a free like team wipe pretty much. It takes up like the entire map. The animation on it is so bugged too. And I also think that Barley's like heal gadget is probably like one of the like top five gadgets in the game. I think you get so much value out of it. Like no matter where you use it pretty much, it's just so much pressure and your team can play like a lot more aggressive if you have that. So I think Barley is really, really good right now. You know what, just because we said throwers, Tick is probably like low A tier for me. It has, it has its maps where it's really good. And the hypercharge on Tick is pretty good too. And like all the knockout maps, I think Tick is just like such a good pick. Uh, most of the bounty ones as well. I would be taking the other throwers like higher in priority, but if they're banned, like I think Tick is just like a really, really strong pick still. He does get like a little outshined by the other ones, I guess right now. Um, but he's still really strong and it's just like probably it's always been the most annoying brawler in the game to play against all right next up we're gonna put chester up here so chester got a rework as well all these rework brawlers looking pretty good right now um but his star power got changed out so he always has the fourth shot before that was just the star power now you get it every time but his new star power is that his first shot if you hit it it does like 2.5k or 2.6k now so it hurts a lot you can actually like really like burst people if they're up close even like if you max range them they're gonna be like pretty low hp if you hit a shot or two on them now um and chester i always thought was good if he ever gets a hypercharge it's gonna be really good there is the rng aspect of chester now on chester i have been going the gadget that kind of gives you the buffs even though it's rng i figured out that if you play aggro with it like you'll get use out of any of the buffs like every time you press it it's either speed hp or damage so if you're playing aggro while you use the gadget you'll always get some value in my opinion and uh yeah <laughs> they gotta rework his other star power which just lets you i think it's called sneak preview and you can see your next super that you're gonna get beforehand i don't think it's really good i don't think anyone ever uses it so i'm surprised they didn't rework that one as well uh but the other gadget on chester is not bad too you get to reroll your super if you get like pop rocks or something which is the worst Chester super. If they ever remove Pop Rocks, Chester is going to be broken, I'm telling you. Because that super holds him back so much. But I think it's a really good pick right now. And it's a good tank counter, and it's good into like a lot of the anti-tanks as well. 
We're gonna put Amber in there as well, guys. I think there's gonna be a lot of A tiers. Like, looking at this, there's so many good brawlers in the game right now. Amber's been good for months now. She got a damage buff, and her spinny gadget also got buffed a few months ago as well. And ever since then, she's been really solid. You can't really jump on her anymore. And there's a glitch where you'll get 6k if you're... There's blue and red side in the game. I think it's blue side to hit the 6k. So, um, yeah, you can't really jump on her if she's blue side Amber with the spinny gadget. And it's just so much damage. It has like, I feel like every gear in the game is good on Amber too. Um, and it's just like a very easy to play brawler. And <laughs> it's just very annoying to play against. You have to outrange it kind of. But yeah, Amber is definitely A tier. All right, I'm going to put Mandy in A tier. It recently got a really, really big buff. And uh, I don't think a lot of people will rate it like A tier, maybe like B tier. But I think it's so broken. Uh, you get... You're super in four shots now, and it's just so much pressure when you have your super with Mandy. Uh, before, like, so if you hit a super now, you just have to hit two shots, and yeah, then you'll have your super back. So it's really easy to chain supers, and it's really easy to get in the first place, and it's just kind of hard to play into it, because you want to play aggro into it, because it wins, like, long range poke. But I think that's kind of hard to, like, force aggro sometimes right now, unless you get, like, kit or, like, meg or something, but most of the time those brawlers will be banned. Um, but I think it's just a really good pick overall, and it's pretty... I don't want to say it's like easy to play, but they kind of dumbed it down by like making the super easier to get, I think. So you can just kind of throw the supers out like a lot more, and you'll probably get like another one before... Uh, before the end of the round or whatever it is. So I think Mandy is definitely like an A tier. All right, we're gonna put Max up next. Now, Max is just one of those brawlers, like I said with Gene, that it's so easy to make a comp with, just like the play style, and you'll get your super, and you just feed someone and they run at them. I think it's just like a really easy brawler to like make comps with, like draft-wise, and uh, the hypercharge is really broken on it, so you can just like stack on top of your teammates, and you'll all get like 75% supercharge, and also charges hypercharges for your teammates. So if you have like a Nita Bear or like a Sandy and you want to get it super, just max hypercharge and <laughs> you'll get your super or your hypercharge. I, I don't like how that's a mechanic in the game. I don't think it should stack. I think the 25%, they should nerf it. I don't know why they haven't, honestly. But uh, it's just like a pretty good brawler all around. They buffed its damage a few months ago and it's just, you can pick it like almost anywhere and just like, it's pretty much impossible to have a bad comp with max in my opinion. Speaking of brawlers, it's easy to make a comp with. We're gonna throw Byron up there next. Uh, Byron got a really, really big buff, and I think it was damage and maybe supercharge, but he doesn't even have a hypercharge right now. He's just really broken. Uh, I think it's really easy to play. All right, speaking of brawlers, it's easy to make a comp with. We're gonna put Byron up there next. You can just spam heal your teammates. I got a buff a few months ago. It was a really big damage buff, I think. They might have buffed the supercharge as well, but ever since then, Byron's just been really good, and it's really good into aggro comps, I think. Like, I pick it as like a max counter, um, and I think it just, it's pretty easy to play, honestly. Like, you just spam heal your teammates. It's not the hardest roller to hit shots with. And the gadget just kind of bails you out too. You should always use the spread gadget on Byron in my opinion. And yeah, the super is just really broken on it. So it's just really, really well-rounded. Uh, high range, like it can heal, it does a lot of damage. Super is like splash and the anti-heal on the super is really good too. You always like almost, almost always want to go the anti-heal uh, Byron super because it just stops healing for like, I think it's 10 seconds or something, which is probably a little too long, but it's a really good star power and Byron's really good right now. So it's definitely like eight tier. <laughs> All right, we're gonna add some more of the new hyperchargers. So Rico, I always thought like if Rico got a hypercharge, it would be S tier, but I don't know. The hypercharge is good. It's just, it's weird to get used from sometimes. It's like, you can't really, it's not like a skilled hypercharge. I feel like it's kind of RNG. Like you just super like and hope the bounces hit them. So it's hard to like kind of, I mean, maybe I'm just not good at Rico, but I think it's kind of hard to make consistent plays with. But it's still all around like a really good brawler. They did nerf the gadget that uh, does damage, so I do think you can go like heal Rico. 
sometimes depending on the matchups like if you're against a thrower or something the heal one's probably better now and speed rico is always like a pretty decent option most of the time people play bouncy but i think speed rico is pretty good all around too so it's just another really well-rounded brawler does a ton of dps got a good hypercharge you get the hypercharge really fast too so you should be getting the hypercharge like twice a game in my opinion if you're playing it well but uh yeah it's definitely a really strong brawler right now Dude, there is just way too many A tier brawlers looking at this list. I don't know if it's just my opinion, but like we're gonna have to put M's in there too. M's got a really good hypercharge. I always thought M's was decent. It just needed a hypercharge. It got it. The hypercharge is pretty good. You don't get it as fast as I'd like, but I think it's still like an A tier brawler and playing against M's is really annoying, honestly. So I don't really mind that you don't get it super fast. Um, but if they're playing a tank or like even just like a Sandy or Nita or something, you should really be pushing them with M's and just like getting your hypercharge. I think Surge is A tier too. It just counters like all the anti tanks pretty much, like Sandy, Nita, it's good to M's as well, Lily, and then like it's good to all the tanks, like Frank and everything. Now, Surge, you can always get hard stuck. So it's kind of hard to pick early sometimes, unless you ban for it if we're talking draft wise. But I think it's just way too good. And it's not even like. It's just the brawler design. It doesn't have a hypercharge. And it was like a C or D tier brawler for a while, I think. But. I think the meta just started leaning a lot more towards like anti-tanks and like aggro. So I think just because it counters that, uh, it's a really good pick right now. And once you get that level two, you can play like uh, the shield or the level up. I think the level up safer and I definitely recommend the level up unless you're against like something you're 100% getting your, uh, your level off of like tanks or something, then you go shield. But I think the level ups is like usually the safer one, but surge just really good right now as well. We're gonna put Stu up in there. Now, I think Stu has gone a bit better with the recent meta, uh, meta change. So I think the speed is really good on it. It still doesn't have a hypercharge. I don't even wanna think of Stu hypercharge, it's gonna be so broken. But I think it's pretty good. If we look at all the brawlers on the list right now, I think it's pretty good into like almost all of them for the most part. Obviously there's some exceptions, but it's good into all the anti-tanks and it's good into the throwers. It's just like a good brawler all around right now. It's safe and uh, you can pick it on most maps. All right, we're gonna put Draco in. So Draco got like a, I don't even think it was that big of a nerf. It was the best brawler in the game. And then it got like a 10% damage nerf when uh, you're supering. I didn't even know the super had damage reduction, honestly. I was like playing Draco a lot. Um, but I think the main reason why Draco fell off a little bit is if we look at like the S tier, I don't think, it, I think Frank in particular is like the hardest Draco counter. It's really hard to play into. I think Meg just kind of melts it. Kit can just jump on Draco and you won't get your gadget off. So Colette, Gale, I think it's just like the brother's really good. Just a lot of its counters are really good too. So if you can never find like a good Draco angle, I think it's really strong still. It's definitely not a weak brawler by any means. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, I, I kind of like playing Draco. I, I didn't at first, but it's kind of growing on me. All right, we're gonna put Pearl up in here. So most of the brawlers, I feel like I've been like anti-tank or something like that in the A tier. So Pearl, a really solid, like long range brawler. It got like a nerf a few balance changes ago, but it's always been good. Uh, ever since it got that one movement speed buff, I feel like Pearl's been really solid. So it's definitely a really safe and well-rounded pick. And it's good in like, pretty much like most modes, most maps. So it's just safe, well-rounded, good range, good damage, good HP. Yeah, it's a, it's a good pick overall. The hypercharge is terrible on Pearl though. It's the worst hypercharge in the game. All right, I'm gonna put Melody in A tier. So Melody got a huge nerf. It's like minus 1K HP. I thought it was pretty bad after that. I think it's just like you have to play it like a lot differently. You can't just like go in on people whenever you want, but I think the super is just so good. And if you ever get on like the high safe or something, or even like in bounty, you can still make like a lot of plays on it. So it's definitely a good brawler. And I think I underrated it a little bit after the nerf, but uh, yeah, the nerf was really big. I think it was just the best brawler in the game. I know I've said that about like Angelo and like Draco, but Melody was definitely up there as well. And yeah, I mean, you definitely have to play it like in Heist right now or Bounty. Maybe even some Knockout, some Gem, depending on what it is. I don't know, but I think it's good. It's mid-A, like maybe on mid-lower side A tier for me right now. But it, it's still a good pick. All right, we're going to put Buster. I didn't even see it down there. Buster is definitely like high A tier for me. I feel like 
it has such a high win rate and it's so easy to play and it's one of those brawlers like max like gene like byron it's just so easy to make a comp with buster i feel like and the only thing you have to worry about is getting ran down because it is like a tank and it does lose to most other tanks but you get the super passively all the brawlers that you get like passive supers on are just so stupid in my opinion i don't i don't like that mechanic um with buster i can kind of understand it because you're i don't know you're standing on your teammates getting a shield but I, I still don't like it the gadget on buster is really good high hp uh it can pierce so it's just so well rounded if it ever gets a hypercharge i think it's gonna be like the best brawler in the game probably uh because i think it would be really good with its kit as well but yeah buster it's just been so good for so long and i think every region like every team like thinks buster is a really good brawler it's like the rest are kind of up for dispute for somewhat somewhat some regions prefer like some of the other brawlers like aggro and na like eu is kind of aggro too in my opinion like sa likes byron mr p you know <laughs> um but yeah i think everyone just likes buster all right i'm gonna put bell i think bell is low a tier now on the long range maps it, it just does really well except for like a few like counters like mandy like piper i think should be beating bell but i think it's just like a really safe long range pick it's always been like that and the hypercharger on it's pretty decent but i think if you ever get the lead like in bounty or something and you get like your bell trap set up it is so hard to push into and i think it's just like a really well-rounded brawler nothing else to really say about bell we're gonna put piper <laughs> The Brawler that counters Bell right under that. So Piper got a Hypercharge recently, and the Hypercharge, it's good. I mean, like, I feel like you don't really use it for, like, the Hypercharge part. I think I kind of, like, I mean, the Hypercharge, like, super part's not bad. You get a bunch of bombs, and, like, you get a knockback and stuff. But most of the time, you're playing Piper, like, long range. If you do pop your Hypercharge, and you have Ambush on, and you curve someone, I think it does, like, an insane amount of damage, like, almost, like, 5k or something like that. Uh, so the hypercharge on it is definitely welcome. Even before, I think Piper was A tier, so the hypercharge, you know, it just kind of bumps it up a bit. Alright, we're gonna put Nita here. Nita, I was kind of thinking about, but I think it's just like the hypercharge super is too good on it, and it's pretty, it's alright in the meta. I mean, there's still gonna be those Nita games, it's still Nita at the end of the day, so there's gonna be those games where you don't get a super, you can barely hit someone, or something like that, and it's just gonna be like the most unfun brawler in the game to play. But if you ever do get that play on Nita, you get your bear, like, it's just so much pressure and it's so good, like, pretty much everywhere you can play it on, like, most modes. So, it's too good to kind of not put A tier, but it can also be, like, really bad, like, depending on the matchups. It's a very matchup dependent brawler. Um, its kit is, like, very... I, it just feels like... I mean, it is one of the original brawlers in the game, so it makes sense why it feels like that, but, uh... Yeah, Nita, it's too good to not put in there, but it can also be, like, really bad to play. But when it's good, it just has way too much impact to not put in A tier. Those were the words I was looking for. <laughs> All right, we're going to put Sandy. Sandy I was thinking about for a while. Um, it did get a pretty decent nerf to the hypercharge speed, but the hypercharge is, like, the best hypercharge in the game, probably. It's so broken. The movement speed you get from it is, like, ridiculous. Um, but it does take a little longer to get and it does get countered by a decent amount of brawlers But I think the gadget on it is just the gadget on Sandy's always been way too good and It's just like the perfect hypercharge brawler like it just is designed for like what hypercharge is I think like kind of aggro and Just run it down the movement speed and the damage helps it a lot So I think it's still a tier the nerf on it was definitely a good nerf, but Honestly, it's probably like middle of A tier. I don't even think it's like low A tier. I think it's probably still... I'd, I'd put it above Nita, I think, slightly. But yeah, Sandy is really good. All right, guys. Next up, starting with B tier. There's a few more brawlers that I think could be low A or B tier. But A is looking a little like full right now. So I'm just going to put them in B tier to get going. And... I don't think this is the best B-tier brawler. It's definitely on the higher end, but we're going to start off with Buzz. And I think Buzz, it's super, is just, I mean, sorry, it's hypercharge is just so good. It definitely has one of the best, I think it's the best designed hypercharge in the game. It's definitely the most fun, and I, it just fits with the brawler. Like, there's some hypercharges where, like, it doesn't really feel good or, like, make sense. 
but buzzes it, it's just like perfect in my opinion like they really like could not have designed a better hypercharge and i think it's just really like even if it's not good into most of these matchups you're gonna get like that one play on buzz where you just like kind of win the game a lot of the time and with the hypercharge it just makes that play happen a lot more so i think it's just a good brawler you always have to be careful you can't give them a free buzz game ever and yeah buzz is gonna be in b tier after that we're gonna put crow now crow again could be a tier um the hypercharge on it is just really good in modes like heist especially into the meta brawlers like it just feels really good into like meg like colette like any of the those heist brawlers um and it's it's not bad in other modes too but it's definitely it definitely shines the best in heist some people have even been going shield crow like it's a hard game you won't get like a lot of slow value you can go shield crow now i think it's pretty good and it pairs really well with the hypercharge as well but it's just like a brawler that like one push will win you the game in heist and it's not bad in the other modes as well we're gonna put rosa in b tier now rosa used to be like a like almost s tier but frank <laughs> just hard counters it. Frank just hard counters like all the tanks in the game right now. And a lot of the meta brawlers like Gale, Colette, like it's just, I don't know. It's not like as good as it was just because of the meta, but it's still really good. It still has a really good kit. Um, and it's definitely, it definitely has a really strong hypercharge as well. And you do get the hypercharge like every time you play it. So you don't have to worry about not getting it. We're gonna put Griff next in B tier. Now Griff, I, I've said this about a few brothers, but if it ever gets a hypercharge, it's gonna be like definitely A or like maybe S, depending what the hypercharge is, but high A tier for sure. And the wall break is just such a nice mechanic to have on your team. There is unbreakable walls, but there's usually like a few wall breaks that you can like do on certain maps and it just like changes the play style of the game. So it's banned a lot in pro play on those maps in particular. And I think it's just like a really well-rounded brawler. Like you can use both star powers depending what you're playing against and the gadget is really good. The second gadget's not the best where you do more damage to like, or it doubles your shot or something you could use in heist maybe. But if you're picking Griff, you're gonna break walls. So I don't think you'd ever really use it, but it's definitely a really good brawler right now. And uh, yeah, there's just way too many good brawlers in the game. Looking at it, like these brawlers are all so good. <sighs> Alright, another B tier brawler is 8-bit. I think it just, it's not like broken, but it's just really, 8-bit's really balanced. So I think it's been really balanced for a while. And if it gets a hypercharge, it'll be really good. I don't know what the hypercharge would be if you like buff the turret up more or something like that. I mean, that's definitely what it would be, but I don't know how they would buff it up more. But it's definitely like, it's a little comparable to Surge, I guess, where it's kind of useless until it gets super. Um, but you know, you can play it in most modes. There's like the bounty comps or knockout comps where you just like get the big turret and you have someone else like a Mandy or like a thrower or something. And you can just play it like everywhere. It can be a gem carrier as well. Honestly, it might be A tier just like <laughs> thinking out loud here, but high B tier is good enough and uh heist it's very good as well there's a lot of damage but it does kind of suck and you can definitely get like same as surge you can get like spawn trapped or something or just like if you have a rough start it's like really hard getting up the map with 8-bit but overall it's a really good brawler <sighs> are we gonna put rt in b tier um rt really got uh, recently got a pretty good rework to the gadget uh the old gadget was like the worst gadget in the game i i don't even know how to describe it so i'm not gonna try but pretty much you charge your super now and it allowed rt to be played pretty differently so if you are gonna go the one where you need to like instantly get your super and play as like a tank almost or something like that then i recommend plus one on rt um but pretty much rt super was always really risky because you could you just get trapped and then you'd be useless but now you can go back to your legs if you ever need to with the gadget so the other gadget's really good too but i think rt getting that buff or the rework which was a buff in my opinion it just made him really solid so he's definitely like high b in my opinion Right, we're gonna put Jackie in B tier. It's just 
like looking at the matchups, it doesn't really have any good matchups here. But the hypercharge on Jackie, like you're gonna get your hypercharge super. It's really easy to get your hypercharge on Jackie, and with the gadgets, and it's too much speed, and you get a really big slow. Like it's just really good at like brawl ball, like gem grab, even something like bounty or something like that. So I think Jackie is just a really good pick, even if it doesn't have the best matchups. Like you're not, I don't think you should ever get a free Jackie game if you're drafting, but. I don't think there's ever going to be a Jackie game where like you can't really do anything. Else. Like there's going to be hard matchups, but at some point you'll be able to make a play on it. Same same thing as Buzz, kind of. They're pretty similar in that aspect. I'm gonna put Carl. It's probably like mid to low B tier. I don't really like. I'm not good at Carl. I don't draft Carl when I draft really, but it's definitely good. And some teams and some players are really good at it specifically. Um, and I think the gadget just really always been really good on it and it's just like it, it gets countered by so many brawlers but if it gets a hypercharge you know like i, I said with like five other brawlers it's gonna be like really really good i don't know what the hypercharge would be you have to be careful with it i think carl's always been like one of the hardest brawlers for them to balance but i think right now it's actually pretty balanced uh, you can use, honestly, Fire Carl, the other gadget, is kind of good. Like, it does so much damage. I think it does, like, 8k, like, 8.5k damage. But it's hard to ever use because the first gadget is so good. Um, but I think it's a really solid brother right now. And you definitely need to pick it, like, in the right situations, though. It's not something you can just, like, blind pick, like, early on. But it's pretty well-rounded and has high HP, good super, good gadget. So it's going to be B tier. Cord, I'm gonna put B tier. I thought Cord was like arguably like S tier like a few months ago, like high A tier at least. Um, but it's kind of one of those things where like it got a hypercharge as well. The hypercharge on Cord's really good. Um, but yeah, there's just like too many Cord counters in the meta right now, and I think Frank like hard counters it and. I don't know, it just doesn't feel as good as it used to. It's still a really good brawler. It's pretty good at doing like a bunch of things. And it's good at defending. It's good uh, against kit and stuff, which is nice. It's definitely one of the best kit counters uh, just for getting them off like the brawler that they're on. And I don't know, it just doesn't feel as good as it did before. The meta just changes sometimes. Like brawlers don't have to get nerfed or buffed to feel worse or better. It's like what happened with Surge. Um, but the meta will just change and it kind of changes all the interactions. So yeah, I think Cord <laughs> with the recent balance changes, it just got slightly worse. It's not a bad brawler though by any means, but I'm gonna put it in B tier. Alright guys, next up is gonna be Ruffs. I don't think Ruffs is bad either. It just kind of seems like there's a lot of better options, but it's definitely good. I don't think like the play style of the meta is really good for roughs i think it's still like pretty aggro and roughs is more like scale play it slow but it definitely has like a lot of good matchups and if you can just like hold on it like not get ran down uh, i think it's really good and you can always go like the healing star power the one that like permanently busts your hp so i think it's just pretty good overall but it's not like amazing it definitely has some maps where it's really good but uh yeah i don't think it's a good or bad pick so it's gonna go in b all right next up it's gonna be jesse i think it has its modes like hot zone or something where it's like really good and it has a good hypercharge it's not like gonna be first picked anywhere or something like that it's just like a pretty good like well-rounded brawler and it has good gadgets, good damage, good super, good hypercharge. So I think it's hard to put it below B tier. Um, it's just good, well-rounded brawler. It can do like pretty much everything. And it's not bad into tanks. It kind of struggles into long range, but I think it's fine. Like it has its maps, like I said. We're gonna put Pam up next. Uh, Pam's definitely a really strong brawler. It just depends on the map. So it's kind of limited. It has a really good super though, um, obviously heals. The gadget on it, like Scrap Sucker, is really, really good. And I think in Hot Zone, it's kind of similar to Jesse, like where it's good, I think. Um, so yeah, I think it's pretty good in Hot Zone, like control modes. Um, it's definitely weak into like 
like Colette or something like that, but then it's really good into like Meg, like some of the other high up brawlers. And I, I don't think it's, it's definitely good. Like there's just way too many good brawlers in the game. Like a lot of these brawlers could be A tier if it was a different meta. It's just like these ones are just kind of a, a bit ahead. But uh, yeah, Pam's pretty good right now. We're gonna put BB in B tier. Um, I think it's probably one of the weaker tanks, but the hypercharge is really good, and I think in some modes, like Heist, um, you can pick in other modes, but it's more matchup, depend matchup dependent at that point. But I think it's pretty good in Heist. Um, most of the time you want to go Speed BB now. Shield BB is not bad though, and the hypercharge on it is really good. So it's going to be in B tier. It's just not bad, not good, um, but the hypercharge on it is really good. We're gonna put Shelly right after that. Shelly's probably like middle high B tier. The gadget on Shelly is just so broken. You can play it like in most modes. Like you can play a knockout just because of the gadget. The hypercharge on it's good. I mean, the hypercharge itself is really basic. I don't like it at all. I hope they rework it, but it's just like a wider attack. But just uh, the type of brawler it is, like run it down. Like it gets so much value from the speed and from the extra damage. So I think it's good. One meta ago, I definitely put an A tier, but uh, stuff changes, so it's gonna be like middle, like high B tier for me right now. I'm gonna put Sprout next. Um, I mean, it's not bad. It's just most of the time you're gonna pick one of the other brawl or throwers, and Sprout's definitely like the easiest one to counter out of the throwers that come to mind. Besides Dynamite, which would probably be B tier, maybe C tier. We'll see. Um, but yeah, the hypercharge on Sprout's always been kind of disappointing, except for in Heist, it can do a lot of damage, but besides that, the hypercharge is pretty useless, like, I don't think it does damage to Brawlers most of the time, like, nobody just stands on the wall, so, it's definitely one of the hypercharges that I think they could have done a lot better job with, um, but yeah, Sprout, it's pretty good overall, it's just, it's too easy to counter, and the other throwers kind of are better than it, in my opinion, in most situations, but it's gonna be B tier. Put Colt in B tier, and high dps for like heist or something you don't really play it in other modes outside of heist like rarely for a wall break but it has a good hypercharge um it does too much damage in heist to not put but pretty much it's you're only playing in heist um but it's not a bad brawler and it's definitely picked early in heist so i think it's just i don't want to put it c tier so we're gonna put it b tier we're gonna put willow in b tier and i mean willow's good you want to pick it if you're scared of getting ran down, but you want to throw her. The issue is it loses to like all the other throwers. Um, so, but it does like, it serves its purpose really well. And it's actually like, it hard counters Frank because you can control Frank. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really good brawler. It's just, it kind of loses to all the other throwers. So it's hard to put it higher than B tier because most of the time you're going to pick the other throwers just because they offer more. Um, but yeah, overall it's not weak or anything like that and definitely has its place in the middle. Alright, we're gonna put Spike here. I got a, I think it was a HP nerf or a damage nerf. I think it might have been a damage nerf actually, but it's still not bad. It just seems like there's always something that you'll pick before Spike. I'm okay with it though. Spike was meta for like way too long and the Mythic Iran is so good too. So it's still like a pretty decent pick. Um, it's just most of the time you're gonna want something that has like more HP, I think. Like all the squishy brawlers that are like anti-tank, um, they have a harder time than just like something like a Surge or like a Chester, like Amber. I think it's just like you can tank more shots with these ones. Spike, you have to play like more max range on and poke a little more. But it's definitely not a bad brawler. Alright, we're gonna put Miko in B tier. <laughs> I might be a little biased. <laughs> Uh, you could definitely argue it to be C tier, I think. I, don't, I wouldn't put it lower than C tier, just because, like, the, I, I think people just suck at Miko, honestly. Like, I don't think people are good at it for whatever reason. But it's definitely, like, not a bad brawler. There's just, like, it's kind of like Spike. There's always going to be, I feel like with the B, like, the C tier brawlers, like, even, like, D, F tier, you just don't want to pick. But there's always going to be something better, but they're not, like, terrible. Like, if someone picks it, they're not, like, throwing the game. But usually there's a better pick than it. So they're like more niche. Nico or Miko is definitely like niche. Um, I'm a little biased. Like you could definitely argue for C tier, but I'm gonna put in B tier just because I like them. Brock just does way too much damage in heist. You can't pick it early though, um, and it does. 
it gets ran down really easily, but they did buff the hypercharge before. You didn't really want to hypercharge super. Now you can, it does more damage. Um, I'm still not used to it, but yeah, the hypercharge on it is good. And the extra stats are always welcome for hypercharge brawlers. It's just hard to pick Brock early, but I don't think it's bad. And you can play it like in a few other modes, not just like heist. It's a little more versatile than Colt, but I think Colt's just better in heist than Brock. So it's kind of a trade off, um, but yeah, it, it's a good brawler overall. I'm gonna put Nani in B tier. Uh, it definitely fell off. I don't know why they nerfed it. They nerfed it a few patches ago. Um, I thought it was like definitely on the good side, like A tier, high A tier before that. Um, but they nerfed it. It's still really good into long range stuff. It's kind of like similar to Brock where it'll just get ran down a lot of the time. So you have to be careful when you're like picking Nani. But I think it's still too good to put it lower than B tier. Like you can play it with a lot of different range comps, as long as you're not worried about getting ran down. And if you're good at it, I think you'll always be able to get some value off of it, like no matter, even if they go something aggro, if you're playing it on like Shooting Star, like you can definitely get a kill or two and just like not like, not lose your lane. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a good brawler. I don't think it deserved the nerf, but it got it, so. It's gonna be middle to low B tier. Oh my god, there's too many brawlers in the game. This is a <laughs> rough video to do for my first video back. But we're gonna put, I think I wanna put Lou, Lou in B tier. I, it's hard, it could be C tier. The hypercharge super is just too good on it and it, it really pairs well. Like, um, There's the NA team Elevate that just like showed how good it was on, well, their comp was good. I don't think they played it the best, but where they just went like Kit Lou and it's just like a really good combo. Lou and Hot Zone is just really good. And I think it is good into like Frank, like good into Meg, good into Colette. Um, and yeah, Hot Zone in specific, Lou is just really strong. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna put B. I don't think B deserves to be C tier. The Hacker B skin's kind of cheating too. <laughs> I like that one, it's pay to win. Um, <laughs> But the spinny gadget on it's just so good for like early control on a lot of maps. And I think it's just like pretty good into the meta too. So I think it's fine as B tier. It's definitely like more like, you have to pick it like more like niche, but looking at like all these brawlers, like if you're playing like hot zone or something, like B is really good into them. And it definitely is like a brawler. Like if you're playing from out of position, it's hard. Um, but I think it's really strong in the right hands and picked correctly. So B is going to be B tier, unironically. I'm going to sneak one more brawler in B tier, then we're going to put it down. Ah, oh, I want to put Poco too. Okay, we'll do two more. We're going to put Lolo, uh, Lola in B tier. I think it's just pretty good into most of the brawlers here, uh, matchup wise. And if it gets a hypercharge, it'll definitely go like probably up to A tier. Um, but yeah, Lola, it's just well-rounded. It has a lot of good matchups. And I think it's just like a safe pick that you're not gonna like troll the game by picking it, but usually there's nothing to pick better. I've said a few times now. And we're gonna put Poco in there as well too. I think it is pretty good for making comps with. And it definitely, it's not, fun to play in my opinion i mean it's okay but i don't like the brawlers where you're like super limited and dependent on like your teammates um i kind of like controlling the game more but it's definitely like a really good support brawler and they buffed the gadget both gadgets actually and both gadgets have their definitely definitely uh time and place when you pick them so i think it's pretty good i do think that the capo is probably better right now on Pogo, but Screech is fine too. All right, we're finally getting out of the B tier. Uh, I'm gonna put more to C tier. I was thinking about putting it B, but I think it's just kind of hard to pick right now. There's so many anti-tanks, even like tanks is not the best one, but it's more to, so there's always gonna be like, kind of like Buzz or something like that, or like Jackie, where you just make one good play and you can win the game off it. And some people are just like way too good at the brawler too. So uh, it's definitely a ping brawler, probably the, high, the best ping brawler in the game. Um, so yeah, it's just really good in the right hands, but people pick it, uh, way too often and it's in the wrong hands most of the time on ladder. So it's going to be C tier and I think, I think that's fair for Mordos. 
We're gonna put Charlie in C tier next. I'm so happy to be able to say that. Charlie's been like S tier, like since it's released pretty much, or like even last one, I'd say it was A tier, but it's just like the super run. It's so broken, the gadget's broken. Both gadgets are really good in my opinion. Uh, but we finally got a pretty decent Charlie nerf, like after like the 10th one. Um, and I think it's safe to say it's C tier. It could be B tier. I think the super on Charlie is just too good to ever like completely put it out of the meta. But yeah, it's definitely still not a terrible brawler. They just nerfed it so much. I haven't played it too much either. So maybe it is B tier, but I think there's a lot of counters for it now and it takes a while to get your super. All right, we're going to put Chuck. You only play Chuck in Heist like 99% of the time. And I don't even think it like wins Heist most of the time since, uh, I mean, I think it has its maps. I think Kaboom is a pretty good Chuck map. And I think actually Safe Sound's probably the best Chuck map. But I think you can base race it a lot now. And uh, it's one of those things where it'll feed like good hyperchargers, kind of like Frank or something. Like you're just gonna feed like good supers, good hyperchargers. So you kind of have to account for that. I think it's good if you play like a control comp and uh, you have Chuck just going in. The other two people like play like defense. Um, but yeah, it's pretty one dimensional. <laughs> you set up your poles and then you go. And yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't like the brawler that much. I feel like they could have done a better job designing it, but yeah, it's definitely like C tier in my opinion. It's only getting heist, really. I'm gonna put Gray. I think Gray is just like with the meta, there's so many comps that are good with Gray, but it feels like a 3v2 once you like get your Gray TP out. And if you're playing it like that style, and you're just like max range poking for people on gray. It just feels really bad, um, especially if they have like projectiles or something, like, or spawnables, sorry. Um, so just because of that, I'm gonna put it C tier. I think it's hard to pick like really early nowadays. And I mean, you can pick into throwers, but it's just like harder to execute than like a lot of the other brawlers. So I'm gonna put it C tier. It's not bad, but it's more, it's really niche right now. I'm gonna put Sam in C tier. I was thinking about putting Sam low B tier. Um, it's just very niche again. A lot of the C tier brawlers are gonna be niche. It's not a weak brawler. It's just very matchup dependent. Most of the time you're gonna be playing another tank. But uh, yeah, like some people are really good at Sam too. They're gonna make crazy plays on it. I, I think it's a good brawler. If it gets a hypercharge, it'll be really, really good. Um, but most of the other tanks are better that I put above. I think they're all kind of better than Sam. So it's going to be C tier, but it's not a bad pick. We're going to have Dynamite up next. Dyna can still like 1v3 a game if it has good matchups. It just, all the other throwers are better for the most part or safer or something. And Dyna does have a hypercharge, it's kind of a weird one. It's pretty RNG. Um, but you know, any brother with a hypercharge will be decent in my opinion. And like I said, it can 1v3 games. It's just, you can't ever really pick it too early. And I think the other throwers do pretty decent into it as well, but it's still a good brawler. It's just like very niche. Are right, we gonna put Bonnie in C tier? And I think it's not bad, honestly. In Heist, I think it's really pretty underrated. I think it's good on safe zone, like a boom. Um, and even other modes, like, I don't know. I think you can play it in bounties sometimes. I think in the max comps, it's okay. I don't think it's just, there's always something better to pick for the most part. Besides, I think the highest maps, you can actually take it kind of early, uh, depending on the bands and what's being picked. But yeah, I mean, it's not good. It's not bad. It's going to go in C tier. Gonna put Otis in C tier. It's gadget, it's really broken. Uh, it's super is good, it's shots good, but most of the time you're gonna pick a hypercharge brawler. So if it gets a hypercharge, you could definitely go up. It's definitely like the right kind of like play style, I think. It's like anti tank and the gadget's like good, like early prio and stuff like that, and good for vision. 
Um, but yeah, there's just not like a lot of reason to pick Otis most of the time. But it's not a bad brawler. Like if someone picks it, like it's definitely fine. So yeah, it's gonna be C tier. Gonna put Edgar in C tier. It kind of falls in the same category as Mortis. <laughs> uh, they're actually very comparable now that I think about it. But Edgar's pretty good, and the hypercharger on it's still really broken. Like most of the time, they're gonna have counters for it. Is the only thing. But with the hypercharge, the interactions are so weird. Like if you don't die right away, you can like kill like most brawlers in the game. I'd say. So I think it's fine, and um, yeah, it's gonna be C tier though. I don't think you could really put it higher than that. I don't play Showdown, so I don't know what the Showdown meta is. I know it's been good in there before, but it's gonna be C tier. Uh, okay, we're gonna put Ash in C tier, and if it gets a hypercharge, I could definitely see Ash being like A tier, depending how good the hypercharge even like S tier. Um, but yeah, the tanks are just so weird because Ash should lose to like all the other tanks like above it, in my opinion. But it's a high skill brawler. I think Ash is like one of the hardest brawlers in the game to be like really, really good at. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be C tier, but I don't think it's a bad brawler. It's kind of like Otis, where it's just. Hard to justify picking it, but it's not bad if you do pick it. All right, next up we're putting Hank in the C tier. This would be like a little biased too, but I actually think it's pretty decent right now. It got another buffed, so its HP is back to what it was. And it got that passive super buff, which is all right. Um, it's hard to just, I feel like people like need to try it out more. And it definitely, the issue with it is like, It'll usually win the first interaction, but then if you like die with position or something, like getting out of spawn is kind of hard. So it has like maps like like Canal Grande or something like that, where I think it's really good. But um, it definitely feeds like hypercharges, which is the main issue. But all tanks are gonna do that at the same time, and it definitely can't punish you as hard as other tanks. It's more like control tank, so it's a weird playstyle. But I think it's it's not bad. It's definitely not a bad brawler, and they've been it's <laughs> they've been giving it sneaky buffs. Like it's not bad. So I think it's C tier. I think C tier is kind of fair for it. You could argue like high D. It's definitely not F tier though. It's like it's definitely pickable in comp. Like a lot of like teams are realizing it too. We're gonna put Primo C tier. I actually think Primo is probably the hardest tank to play well. Just its range feels so awkward, and it doesn't have like besides its super like. If it had something to make it easier to get on you with the first interaction, I think you could put Primo a lot higher, but it's so useless without its super. And if you mess up the super, it just, like, it's way too hard to execute sometimes. Um, if you mess up, like, one super, then you're just, like, you lose so much momentum. The hypercharger on it's not, like, crazy, honestly. I think they could have done something better for that. But the gadgets are all right on Primo, and both the star powers are fine on it, too. It's just, like, the other, like, it's so much easier to press, like, a Rosa gadget and get on someone. Um, and Primo's range is really like weird too. Like it loses like range versus or tank versus tank like by range with a lot of the brawlers above it, like Rosa, um, for example. So I think it's kind of it's just hard to play honestly, but it's not bad. We're gonna put Mr. P in C tier. It's a good brawler. It just gets ran down way too hard, but. I'm putting it C tier, like if you're playing control comps and one team has like Mr. P, I think you'll just slowly win out. But the issue is it takes too long to get online and it's like, it's not a good brawler <laughs> besides, the super is really broken on it, but it's not a good brawler besides the super. And there's too many throwers now. The throwers just like take it out really fast. Um, so yeah, it's like a really weak brawler, but the super is just so good on it, the spawnables. But it's gonna be like low C tier for me. All right, I think it's time to get into D tier. We're gonna put Macy as, I think, the best brawler in D tier. I'm a little biased, but I think it's fair. It's hypercharge is still really good. It's just harder. It's kind of like Primo, where it's just like a lot harder than the other anti tanks. But it's still all right. Like, if you get control with Macy, like, you're kind of chilling and uh, you can cycle supers. They did buff it recently, so if you hit two people with your super, you're one shot to it now. Before you were two shots, um, and it's still four shots to your first super, which kind of slowed it down a lot. That's like a really, really big nerf. But before that, it was like an S tier brawler. So I think it's okay. Just a lot of the other brawlers got hypercharges and buffs, and 
And Macy's like harder to play than the monk. I'm gonna put Gus in D tier. Um, it's definitely niche. Um, they gave the shield a knockback a few changes ago and it helped it a little. It's kind of hard to like, you only get the knockback on yourself. Like it's so hard to time the knockback, like throwing it on one of your teammates. But it's not bad. It's not like amazing either. So I, I'm going to put it D tier. I don't think it deserves to be F tier. So Gus D tier, I think it's fair. I'm going to put Fang there. Like Fang, it's not a good brawler, but then it's like Fang. So you'll get one super and you can team wipe. It's like, it could be C tier, I guess. And the hypercharge, it just takes way too long to get now. Uh, most of the time, if you're playing in smart players, you're not going to get your hypercharge in the game. Um, and <laughs> I can't believe what they made the hypercharge like goes through wall and like the popcorn. I think they could have just nerfed it um, before, like just get rid of the popcorn or something. Like I don't know why you need the popcorn, but it's gonna be D tier. And I mean, it's a good like you can still lose. Like if someone picks Fang, you can lose the game like very easily. You just have to play smart. But it, it just takes too long to come online. Kind of kind of like Macy, like where you have to hit four shots and then you get your super. And you know it's harder to execute than a lot of the other brawlers above it. We're gonna put Eve in D as well. I don't think Eve's a bad brawler, just very niche. It definitely has its maps like Canal Grande, um, out in the open, like the maps where you can use the water on it. It's like a, I mean, Angelo. I don't know why they give Angelo a passive as well, but uh, yeah, Eve's a good brawler. The super on it's all right, and I don't know. I think. You give it a hypercharge, you could easily be like low A, like high B tier. It's not a bad brawler though, and it definitely has its place in the meta. So honestly, Eve could probably be. I'm gonna put it up to C. I think it's I think it's C tier. So Eve's gonna be the one that goes up there, and yeah, I think that's fine. I'm gonna put Grom D tier. I think you can pick it in knockout. It's like it doesn't lose to the other throwers that much. It's kind of like in my opinion, the best one into Tick. I think it's fine into all the other throwers, it's just everything else. <laughs> so I think it's fine picking into the other throwers and Squishy Brawlers, but everything else, like, kind of, it's like more, it's way too hard to hit your shots against, like, if they go max or something, you kind of gotta let it go. But it's not like, it does a lot of damage too, it's just its kit with the meta is like really hard to pull off sometimes. But on like Gold Arm, on the open, um, or sorry, not on the open, Gold Arm or Flaring, I think it's fine there. And the gadgets are fine on it. It does a lot of damage. Super is really good on it. So we're gonna put D tier. I'm gonna put Tara D tier. I don't think it deserves to be F. Um, it, it's just, it definitely needs a hypercharge. All the other like anti-tanks are getting hypercharges. Um, so the ones that haven't got it yet are kind of left behind except for Surge. Um, but yeah, it does get countered by a lot of the other anti-tanks as well. The gadget on it's still really good and the super on it's really broken. It just takes too long to get the super. And uh, it's kind of, with speed gear, I always found it hard since they added speed gear to hit tar pulls consistently if it's a grassy map or something, but it's definitely still one of the best supers in the game. We're gonna put Janet D tier. It's not bad. Just uh, the gadget on it's good. It has a good pierce shot. It just gets ran down a little bit, but I think it's not bad. If it gets a hypercharge, it could definitely be like A to B. I'm gonna put Leon D tier. Leon's so weird because it was like definitely S tier and then it got like a slight nerf and it became like so bad because I think it just takes too long to get your super now and it's like a brawler that's like really bad without your super so I don't know I think it's okay you could argue C tier for Leon maybe but there's just like always like something better to pick than Leon for the most part Gonna put Squeak in D tier. I feel like you never see a Squeak anymore. I think the gadget on it's too good to put it F tier though. And the super is pretty decent too, but the gadget is definitely like way too good. <laughs> the rest of the kit kind of sucks. Um, but that gadget is just like such good like area control. So I think I'm gonna put it D tier. 
I don't think it deserves to be F. Like the F tier relics are actually pretty bad. We're gonna put Bo in D tier as well. It just kinda, it's not bad. It's just not good at anything. The mines are still like a good super, but most of the time people are able to take them out uh, pretty easily. Obviously there's exceptions, but um, I think it's, I don't know. It's not bad, like you can win games with Bo, it's just like you'll never really pick it. And we're gonna put Bull in, actually no. We're gonna put Bull F tier. It's just so useless without a super. And I don't know, in heist you can pick it, I guess sometimes. It has a hypercharge, the hypercharge is kind of weird on it. I think the gadgets are really good, but it's hard I feel like most of the time you gadget, you're gonna trade. Not trade, but you can definitely get a kill. But when you run out of gadgets, like, it's kind of hard unless, I mean, like, obviously, like, there's people that are really, like, crazy at bull, like, and can do really sick plays on it. I'm not one of those people. A lot of people aren't, so it's gonna be F tier. You could put a D tier, though. I was thinking about D tier, but it's definitely, it needs a buff, for sure. Daryl's gonna be right there, too. If Daryl gets a hypercharge, I could see it going up. Um, it's the only brawler that I'm kind of okay has the passive like super. I still like don't think it needs it, but they gave it to it. I think Daryl is the start of that problem. I don't really like that. I think I said earlier with like Buster and Kit, but uh, yeah, Daryl. I think maybe it just feels okay because it's so underwhelming right now, and it just loses to most of the other tanks. But yeah, Doug actually like it heals a lot. It's just it feels like a three v two most of the time, and. Most people are gonna have, they're not gonna give you a good Doug game ever. And it's just super team oriented. And I don't know, I, I just think the design on it was kind of a miss. And in my opinion, the worst brawler in the game is Penny. It, it's just, the turret's not that good anymore. I don't know why. And it does no damage. The barrel's all right, but it's just so underwhelming, but. Penny's gonna be the worst brawler in the game for me. I think Doug's better than it. All right, guys, that took a while. There's too many brawlers in the game now, but hope you guys enjoyed the tier list, and I'm gonna be uploading more often. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Peace.